Entrepreneur on Fire, episode 268. Fire. 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 Your daily dose of inspiration, encouragement, and energy from the most successful entrepreneurs in the world. Prepare to ignite now. This is Entrepreneur on Fire with John Lee Dumas. Entrepreneur on Fire. On Fire. Fire Nation. When I started my journey, I was alone. I had a vision and a whole lot of passion, but no one to support and help me along the way. What I needed was to join a mastermind, and that's exactly what I did. Now, I'm starting our masterminds, Fire Nation Elite. Visit FireNationElite.com to fill out your application and schedule a one-on-one 15-minute chat with me today. Okay, Fire Nation, let's get started. I am simply thrilled to introduce my guest today, Derek Coburn. Derek, are you prepared to ignite? You better believe it. (laughs) I love it. Derek is a partner of a wealth management firm who started an unnetworking community in DC called Cadre, which currently supports over 100 remarkable CEOs and business leaders. He is also the author of Networking is Not Working. I've given Fire Nation a little overview, Derek, but take a minute. Tell us about you personally. We want to get to know you and then give us an overview of your business. Great. Thanks so much uh, for having me, John. Yeah. I'm really excited to, uh, to be doing this with you. Cool. So I, I live in D.C. proper with my uh, beautiful and amazing wife, Melanie, who's also my business partner with Cadre. I can verify that, Fire Nation. I've met her. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, two boys, three and almost one, a pit bull, loving the city life. Everyone's healthy, so uh, couldn't be more excited on that front. And uh, as far as business goes, I... I've been in the wealth management business for 15 years. I own a wealth management firm with two other guys, have 15 employees. And while I was growing this thing, like most professionals, I I felt the best way to bring on new clients was by networking, attending events, uh, joining groups. And what I found was that for the time I was spending it, it really wasn't all that worthwhile. And so I, I formed Cadre. Uh, as a way to bring together remarkable, successful people. But rather than just uh, vetting for job title or could they afford it, we were vetting for some intangibles. Were were they a pay it forward person? Were they influential? Did they believe in word of mouth marketing? And so bringing bringing all of those types of individuals together has allowed everyone to let their guard down. And uh, as a result, they felt more comfortable recommending each other, hiring each other. And it's not always easy. I mean, I had to get rid of 25 people. I proactively uh, turned away $150,000 of revenue last year just to keep the culture intact. But so far, it's, it's working really well. All about the culture. I'm reading a great book about that. Pour your heart into it. It's the story of Howard Schultz and Starbucks. So I couldn't agree with you more. It's a great book on that philosophy. And Derek, I want to tell a little story real quick about how we met and just to kind of clarify for Fire Nation the power of networking, because I personally think it's a great example. We were at Social Media Marketing World in April, a great event. Thousands of people were there. I walked outside with a friend to grab some lunch. There's Derek with his wife. I was walking by. Derek reaches out, grabs me, says, hey, John, just want to say I love your show. If you want to join us for lunch, I'd love that to happen. I sit down. We have a great chat. You ask some great questions. We got to know each other. You bought me lunch. That was so kind of you, so thank you. And we <laughs> developed a great relationship. And here we are now talking about you, your business, your life, your journey on Entrepreneur on Fire. So it's just a great example of the power of networking working. And maybe a little hint for Fire Nation listeners, if you see me, buy me lunch. But <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> but no, I wanted to share, share that because I was just really impressed with you as a person. I was really impressed with the way you explained Cadre to me at that time. I was really impressed by it. And I love that you've kept those morals intact. You've kept your vision focused on what you believe in for it. And turning away $150,000 is not easy for anybody, but that shows that you really believe in the long-term vision of Cadre. So congrats to you. And we're going to dive more into that, Derek. But before we do, we love starting Entrepreneur on Fire off with a success quote to get that motivational ball rolling. So take it away. All right. So before I unveil my quote and uh, have, uh, you know, 
thousands upon thousands of eyes collectively roll to the backs of their head because <laughs> the quotes from the quotes from Seth Godin, which is such a you know cliche thing to do. Um, it's actually not from one of his books and it's not from his blog. It was during an event of his that I was attending last year. And the quote that he said, which he you know gave me permission to use was the value of your connections is worth is now worth more than the value of your service or widget. So, you know, essentially that we I think we all sort of fall in love with our product and think that what we do, our core deliverable is is um, the end all be all. And obviously it's very important. Um, but this quote, which could be taken a number of different ways, the way that I take it is that the value of your network, the value of your connections and your ability to make things happen can ultimately be even more important than uh, the primary service or product that you're providing your clients. So, Derek, give Fire Nation a recent example of how you've applied that mentality and how it's proven itself. Yeah, well, I started thinking about, you know, I've been doing this with my wealth management business, but you know, really recognizing that as a financial advisor, sure, my clients hopefully think that I'm the best financial advisor out there. Yeah. But if we're going to be measuring uh, results and measuring better or best in terms of just what we provide, it's a steep slope for a lot of us. And so the, what I've done with Cadre is really try to help my members understand and leverage their community, the people around them to add even more value for their clients and the relationships that they have. And in fact, I think I I was listening to your interview from a week or two ago. I forget who it was with, but you mentioned your business coach. And the thing that I remember you mentioning about your business coach was that she had created some great introductions for you while you were launching Entrepreneur on Fire. So I'm sure she's a great business coach. I'm sure that that uh, the core deliverable that you expect from her was fantastic. But what you talked about and what you really remembered was her ability to tap into her network and connections to make good things happen for you, her client. Well, your timing is impeccable, Derek, because this interview is going live July 15th. So a lot of people are listening to this on July 15th. And just earlier today, this is my Monday of interviews. I'm talking to eight great entrepreneurs. Jamie Tardy, my business coach, was one of those. So hers is going live July 13th, just two days before you. So this is really cool, really exciting that Entrepreneur Fire probably just heard that whole interview that I had. And now you're sharing this example just to kind of put a stamp on that. So awesome stuff, Derek. Let's keep the ball rolling because we're going to talk about your journey as an entrepreneur. You've had 15 years in the wealth management industry That's a long time and you're still a young guy. So you must have been cranking it pretty early on in life and you've stayed the course. So share with Fire Nation a time in that journey when you failed, when you just fell flat in your face and how'd you overcome that? Well, for me, it, 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 um, it wasn't so much a failure as a, as a challenge. And, and, uh, back in 2008, I was staying awake until three o'clock every morning to get done what I had to get done. Um, I, my, my son was, uh, was, was going to be, uh, introduced to the world just in, in about, th- uh, about three months after that. I knew it wasn't a pace I could maintain. And so, you know, at the advice of a couple of friends, I went and got checked out and, uh, for ADD. And, um, once again, I mean, most entrepreneurs have ADD, but I had it where I think 45 of the 50 questions I was asked checked, checked out to be a positive sign Yikes. for ADD. Um, so, you know, this was literally, I would have 15 browser pages open at a time, 10 books I was reading, but finishing none of them. And so I started, you know, I started taking medication actually, and it, 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 you know, just was this massive transformation in my life and in my, and, and for my career. I, uh, for me, the big moment was two or three days after I went on medication, I was sitting, uh, on a flight. I, you know, three hour flight to Florida, I read a 300 page book, start to finish, did not get up one single time. And I'd never been able to do that before in my life. I mean, I was, a, I was a guy that, you know, I was always a numbers guy. I mean, you know, 720 verbal essay or uh, uh, math SAT, 400 verbal SAT. And, <laughs> you know, here I am ever since, you know, 100, 150 plus books later, I write my own blog now. And so it really, um, you know, it, it really transformed transformed a lot. I mean, I, I, I got everything so tight with them, with my wealth management business. Uh, I wrote a 300 page systems manual and then I sort of had 30 hours a week where I was sitting around twiddling my thumbs looking for something to do. And that ultimately led to, to me starting cadre. 
Wow. Well, Derek, first off, thank you for sharing that. It's very generous of you to give us an inside glance at your life, something that a lot of people look at as a very personal nature that you had to deal with and that you overcame. And it really, because of your willingness to share it, could help a lot of listeners out there and maybe make them realize, hey, you know, maybe I should go get checked out because I might be in a similar situation to Derek and I need a little assistance to kind of get me focused and make things happen. So thank you for that. And if you can just pull out for Fire Nation one clear lesson that you learn from that challenge, what would it be? You never really know what you're capable of because for me, I had always sort of gone with the flow and played to my strengths. And, um, and you know, so far it was working for me pretty well. But, uh, but just enabling this different layer of focus, which I had never had before, allowed me to to not only try new things, but to actually excel at some of those things. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed it uh, and enjoyed it, uh, you know, and still do to this day. So, Derek, let's continue our journey in your life as an entrepreneur. You move forward. You have these 30 extra hours a day. You decide on cadre and you really want to put your focus into that. But share with us an aha moment that you've had when this light bulb just went off and you said, wow, this resonates with me. This resonates with what I want to be all about. I feel like I'm fulfilling an authentic purpose when I'm doing this. What was that, Derek? And how do you turn that into success? So my, my aha moment, which occurred before I had ever even thought of cadre and, and really sort of ties in with the quote that I gave earlier, involved a wealth management client of mine back in, you know, it's around the same time frame, 2009. Okay. Uh, we'll call him David and we'll say he's a landscaper. And David called me up and said, Derek, I, I got a call from one of my best clients they said that their brother-in-law or their brother, whoever it was, was, you know, it, it was in my business and he would be doing them a great favor if he would take a meeting with this, uh, with this gentleman. And he, and he said, you know, I love Derek and, and Derek's my guy. I can't imagine changing what I'm doing. And they assured him that all they were really looking for was uh, him just to sit down and give him a chance. And so he let me know about it. I said, great, go for it. And he called me the day after the meeting and he said, Derek, I have to tell you what went down. Um, you know, met with him for about 45 minutes and towards the end of the meeting, he presented me with the conclusion that if, if I had my money invested with him for the past couple of years instead of with you, that I would have averaged an extra 3% each year during that time period. And his response was, well, that's great, but Derek has referred me to clients that generated over $2 million for my business during that same <laughs> time period. And uh, so in theory, Derek could have lost half the money in my portfolio, which I didn't do, by the way, uh, and I still would have been better off working with him than working with you. And the reason why it was such an aha moment for me was because I was doing this sort of thing matter-of-factly for my clients. And, and I started thinking like, gee, the best thing that could happen to me in my business was to get a referral from a happy client. So why wouldn't the best thing that I could do for one of my clients be giving them a great referral or a, an opportunity for their business? And I really started to, to focus on that. And that led to me forming my own networking group and, and doing things around my best client relationships, figuring out how I could add value for their business and really being an extension of their business development and marketing department above and beyond the core expectation they had of me as a financial advisor. That's just a great story that you told there. And I can just see exactly that happening. This guy, you know, willing to go in and sit down and the wealth management person thinking it was just all about the numbers. Let me just show that, hey, your portfolio would be a little bit higher if you had gone with me instead of Derek. Just straight numbers. But you realizing and your client realizing it was more about the numbers. It was about the whole experience you were delivering. So, Derek, pull out just one clear lesson from this aha moment that you can share with Fire Nation. I termed this experience the ultimate tiebreaker. And what it did for me, aside from uh, making me realize that I needed to learn more about my clients and what additional value I could be bringing to them for their yeah. business, it was, I call it the ultimate tiebreaker because it's also great to use in a marketing and a networking setting because regardless of what you do, regardless of uh, if there's people out there that would meet me or my clients would try to refer me to them, if they felt like they had a great relationship with their financial advisor, 
you know, what are they basing that on? And then as soon as they find out that I, in addition to doing what they expect me to do, that I'm going to understand their business and potentially be able to create opportunities for them. And I made that uh, a big focal point of, of not only my, my networking efforts, but my marketing efforts as well. Wow, that is so cool. And Derek, I want to throw you a little bit of a curveball here because I always love how the different interviewees that I have on the show answer this question. So have you had an I've made it moment? When you asked me to be on your show. <laughs> Derek, are you just buttering me up right now? I'm not buttering you up. I'm, I'm already on the show, right? I guess, but That's you know, in terms, of a, in terms of an I made it moment, I'm not a complacent person. I always feel like I can get better. I went to a conference recently called Mastermind Talks put on by Jason Geinard in Toronto. There was a, a ton of unbelievable speakers there. And the front of the brochure said, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Boom. I know that he's not the first to use that quote, but I mean, I, I just always want to be one of the dumbest guys in any room or, or setting that I'm in and, and just have this this passion for learning and always wanting to be better. Love that. And Derek, we always love talking about the journey. And it's so obvious that you're enjoying your journey. And you're always pushing your own envelope and your willingness to fail because you're just really pushing yourself forward and to pivot and to adjust and to change is just so prevalent on so many levels. But let me just ask you, are you enjoying your journey? And if yes, what's your philosophy on that entrepreneurial journey? I really am enjoying the journey. Um, it's funny that you say that because uh, James Altucher, I think you've had on yes. your show before, uh, his new book is great. It's called Choose Yourself. And he talks about the journey in a different way than what you're asking me in a different way than, than what a lot of us think. And he's saying, you know what, don't worry about the journey so much as worrying about the moment that you're in. And I think for me, I've always been very goal oriented. I've always been very focused on where I'm headed. Uh, but my sort of like my mantra for 2013 is to focus more on being present in my businesses and, you know, the time that I'm spending with my wife and my kids. And so in a weird sort of way, I think I'm getting more out of the journey by thinking about it even less than, than I used to. I really like that different perspective a lot, and I'm a huge believer in that. And there's a great book that came out, I think it was back in like 2008, and it really just hit the world by storm, sold over 2 million copies, The Power of Now. And that's what it talks about. It talks about living in the moment, not living for the future when you just get over that next hump or when you hit that goal and then set that next one. It's living in the moment, living in the now. James Altucher, he was a great guest on Entrepreneur on Fire. You can check out that entrepreneuronfire.com slash James Altucher. He also just did an amazing interview with Derek Halpern. It was a live event that Derek Halpern threw in New York City. So if you just Google Derek Halpern slash James Altucher. I'll put the link in the show notes because James got up on stage and he's a very self-deprecating person. He literally could be a comedian. He should be a comedian as well if he wanted to focus <laughs> on that. But what he talks about at that live event and what this video shares is really incredible. So I just wanted to echo that point about James and about living in the moment and being present. So I'm really happy that you're there, Derek. And I really want Fire Nation to get there as well. So that book, Choose Yourself, the video, we're all going to have that in the show notes, entrepreneuronfire.com slash Derek Coburn. So Derek, talk to Fire Nation about the present. Speaking of the moment, what is one thing that's really exciting you right now? Well, I would have to say that right now, uh, the most exciting thing for me is I'm, I'm almost uh, finished uh, writing a book. Networking is not working. And, um, and, and the book's really, it, it has two parts. One is very philosophical. So the first part is, uh, you know, my, my pal David Seitman Garland in his book said that networking events are like nightclubs and that everyone's looking for a professional one night stand. <laughs> and, and, you know, what's in it for me? And, uh, you know, all of, the, all of the networking books and articles that I've read, even the ones that have been really valuable, they sort of treat these larger networking events as a sacred cow that, that's not going anywhere. And the advice is skewed to be more successful at networking when you attend these events. 
But in keeping with the dating analogy, I mean, if, if you were to if you were to buy a good book, how to meet the love of my life or how to meet my dream spouse, they don't start off and say, chapter one, step one, continue going to nightclubs and bars every night. They will say, uh, focus more on, you know, dinner parties, more intimate settings, get your friends involved. And so for me, you know, networking, successful networking, a lot of times entails taking the time that you would spend going to these larger events and focusing on creating more intimate settings around your best clients and some of your best relationships. And then that sort of dovetails into the second part of the book, which is really the, the how to what I did in the process for for anyone to form their own 20 to 25 person networking group, uh, wherever they are, that would include some of their best clients, some of their best clients, key relationships, and then some other handpicked individuals and how being a connector and, and bringing them together uh, can will, will, will ultimately add a lot of value for your clients uh, but at the same time, put you in a position to get more introductions to the types of people that you're looking to grow with. Wow. Well, I'm really excited about this book for so many reasons. One, because I really love all the people that you respect, the James Alltouchers, the Seth Godins of the world. You've read so many books. You've put so much of what you've read and learned into action with Cadre. Just hearing what you're saying now just makes me realize that this book is going to be full of actionable tips. So when are we thinking, Derek, this book is going to be ready for purchase? Well, I think uh, it's going to be sometime in in August. And we're also simultaneously working on putting a course together as well that Whoa. will really provide a lot of the nuts and bolts and uh, people that want to get really serious about it, just sort of another layer to position them for success. Very cool. And is there a website that people can go to to learn more about you, Derek? Yeah, the, the website, um, it, it could either be Cadre DC or DerekCoburn.com, which should be up in, certainly that will be up by the time this, uh, you know, this uh, interview goes live. Wonderful. Well, listen, Fire Nation, if you go to DerekCoburn.com, I know for a fact, because Derek's a smart guy, he's going to have it there waiting for you. He's going to have a link on that page where you can jump on the email list to be alerted when this book, when this course becomes available. So get over there, sign up. We'll have a link again on entrepreneuronfire.com slash Derek Colburn that will take you right to his page where you can jump on that informative list that he's going to have available. Because again, I know he knows what he's all about. Derek, We've now reached my favorite part of the show. We're about to enter the lightning rounds, and this is where I get to ask you a series of questions, and you come back at us, Fire Nation, with amazing and mind-blowing answers. Sound like a plan? Sounds like a plan. What was holding you back from becoming an entrepreneur? Nothing really, ever. I, I, I like to tell people that I, that I did not conform when it wasn't cool to not conform, um, I, I literally as a sophomore in high school, I was cutting class to get, uh, you know, to get the upper hand on my comic book business at the time. Uh, you know, in college, I, I, uh, much to the chagrin of my mother, uh, did not, uh, have the GPA she would have liked because I had invested in, uh, a bar and a, a club that a lot of my classmates were going to. So for me, <laughs> It's always been there. And, uh, you know, just uh, yeah, I think I was held back a little bit in the wealth management business. But aside from overcoming that, I've always been all about it. What is the best advice you've ever received? Well, I've received a lot of good advice. But I, one thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately comes from our, our buddy, Chris Brogan, who wrote a really great blog post called Access is an Asset. This is about a year and a half ago. And the, the basic premise is that most people view things like property or cash in their bank as an asset, but not really bothering to, to think about, you know, and I was doing, I wasn't doing this either, not really thinking about the people and the ideas and the resources in our world as, as an asset. And, and it just really helped me to, to keep a, a focus on how important those things were, both in terms of building access building my access to other people, ideas, resources, while creating that type of access for people in my world. Powerful. What's something that's working for you right now? What's working for me right now is uh, it, it took me about nine months to write the first three chapters of my book, and it took me two weeks to write the final six. 
Wow. And shortly thereafter, I read an article, I think it was in the New York Times, it was called You Can Be Busy or You Can Be Remarkable, But You Can't Be Both. And the basic idea is that we we need to schedule large blocks of time um, to allow our creative juices to flow properly. And and what I was doing, what I was doing for those first nine months uh, is scheduling an hour here, an hour there. And, and, you know, I would have writer's block. The ideas weren't coming to me. But when I started, which was before I read the article, but the article really crystallized it for me. So giving giving us the, the space and the freedom by not always being booked, by not always having something to do that will allow us to think about the next big thing, to think about the ideas that we have and to be able to act on them. And that's something that I continue to do and it's been working really well for me. Boom. Do you have an internet resource, Derek, like an Evernote that you're just in love with that you can share with our listeners? There's a few, but one in particular that I love right now is called Contactually. Ooh. And contextually, while while it does a lot of really cool things, the, the the basic idea is that it will sync up. It's 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 not it's not something that you have to download. It will sync up to your contact list and allow you to create buckets for different types of contacts based on your relationship with them and how often you should be in contact with them. So your clients, for example, could be thirty days. Your prospective clients could be ninety days. Your centers of influence could be 90 days and it will sync up with your email, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, everything. And if you are not in touch with somebody that's important to you in the time frame that you designated, you'll get an email reminding you to follow up with that person. Wow. Contactually. Well, Fire Nation, you can find the links to this resource and everything else that we've mentioned. The James Altucher video, Chris Brogan's Access is Not an Asset, the We Can Be Busy or We Can Be Remarkable, We Can't Be Both article, everything at entrepreneuronfire.com slash Derek Coburn. So Derek, if you could recommend one book for our listeners, what would it be? Yeah, I've read a lot of the books that people have mentioned here and, and, cool. and, uh, and really, and I, I like all the books that you've mentioned so far during this interview, but but one that flies under the radar for a lot of people that that had a huge impact for me is called Different um, by Young Me Moon. She is the the uh, she chairs the MBA program at Harvard right now, and it's sort of like a a, a blue ocean strategy, but I, I like this one more. It's not it's not the easiest read, but it will really push anyone who reads it to to uh, to to find even more ways they can differentiate themselves from their competitors or from other businesses that are offering something similar. Wow. Well, Fire Nation, if you haven't already, you can get the audio version of this book for free by going to eofirebook.com. It's a gift from Audible for Entrepreneur on Fire listeners, eofirebook.com. So Derek, this next question is my favorite, but it's kind of tricky. So take your time, digest it, then come back at us with an answer. Imagine you woke up tomorrow morning in a brand new world identical to earth, but you knew no one. You still have all the experience and knowledge you currently have. Your food and shelter is taken care of, but all you have is a laptop and $500. What would you do in the next seven days? I could probably use my experience in the wealth management field to start going off and getting clients, really using my ultimate tiebreaker theory to find out, hey, who are you currently working with? What problems are you having that need to be solved? And and try to really learn how I might be able to help them accomplish that. But for me, you know, I, I, use, I, I heard the term once called passion prospecting, and it's all about taking the things that you're passionate about. So for me, that, that would be sports, it would be drinking wine, you know, travel, a few other things, finding people that, that, are, that, that share those passions with me. And, you know, my basic approach and whenever I want to get to know someone is, you know, to really figure out who I want to meet, figure out the best way to meet them, and then figure out what I can do to help them and add value for them. Boom. Well, Derek, you have just mentioned so many great resources during this interview all of which are going to be linked up at entrepreneuronfire.com slash Derek Colburn. Give Fire Nation one parting piece of guidance, share how we can find you, and then we'll say goodbye. My parting guidance is that if you are always focusing on how you can add value, and this is just from, from my experience, 
if you're always focused on how you can add value for other people and not worried and not let the, the day-to-day worries of where your next client or your next piece of business is going to come from, things typically tend to, to take care of themselves and work themselves out. As far as the best place to find me, uh, you mentioned my website, uh, DerekCoburn.com will be up soon. And then on, on Twitter, I'm at Cadre DC. And I uh, just want to thank you again for, for having me on today. This was great. Well, Derek, I love your parting piece of guidance. Entrepreneur on Fire is a perfect case study for that. Just six months of just giving value, expecting nothing in return. And then things started taking off on the monetization side of Entrepreneur on Fire. So that actually works, Fire Nation. It's a great mentality to take if you're able to. Just give, 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 value, value, value. It'll get you back on the flip side. Derek, thank you for being so generous with your time, your expertise, and your experience. Fire Nation salutes you, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Okay, Fire Nation, are you inspired enough to start your entrepreneurial journey? You need to begin with a platform, and your platform is your website. I've created a video that will take you through the process of buying your domain, installing WordPress, and creating your first post all in under seven minutes. Visit entrepreneuronfire.com slash blue to find out how to access this great video and take your entrepreneurial leap today. Thank you for joining us at EntrepreneurOnFire.com, your daily dose of inspiration. Prepare to ignite.